Hello everybody, welcome to Lido Fine Art, and today I have something new for you guys. So, yes, this channel is dedicated to art and the paranormal, however, in addition, I will also be adding some true crime story times um, once in a while, just so to switch it up so you guys aren't bored with the same stuff. So, today we will be talking about a cold case that happened in um, Pennsylvania. It's called the 1964 homicide of Maurice Ann Chivarella. I hope I'm saying that right. If not, I'm really sorry. So, let's get started. Maurice Chivarella was born on Thanksgiving Day in 1954 in Waterloo, New York, to Carmen, who was originally from Wilkes-Barre, and Mary, who was from Hazleton, Pennsylvania. Eventually, the family moved back to Hazleton, Pennsylvania. Maurice was someone who had big, bright blue eyes and was always smiling, and she loved playing with Oregon with her brother where, would, where they would um, have fun composing songs together. The parents worked demanding jobs where her mother works at a knitting mill and her father a grocery store that he actually owned and was right next door to their house. And he, he had worked seven days a week with 12 hour shifts. Only on Sundays, the family would take a break from work to attend church. For an hour, Carmen would close his grocery store around lunch while his wife prepared a special meal for them. This was the rare occasion that the entire family could sit down together and relax. Maurice was so earnest and passionate about her religion that she actually wanted to be a nun. Um, on March 18th, 1964, Maurice decided that she was going to walk to school early, alone and without the company of her siblings because she wanted to drop off a can or two cans of fruit that were given to her by a nun. And she wanted to drop those off at her classroom before daily mass. Except she never made it there to school. Once word got out that she didn't make it to school that morning or come home for lunch, her father went looking for her. Meanwhile, the police also searched for her. Before she had any idea of what was going on or happening, the mother had been very anxious with a terrible feeling that something was wrong. You know, like a mother's intuition. They always say to listen to that in cases like this. So, um, the father came to learn by someone passing by him that his daughter had been found dead. Which, to be honest, that's kind of a horrible way to find out that your daughter is, you know, dead. I don't know. I don't know what's worse. Like, learning that from the police or just some occasional person just walking by. I mean, finding out, you know, a family member has been killed is no way, no way, shape, or form easy. But anyway. Her body had been found in a strip mining pit just north of Route 309 in Hazel Township close to the Hazleton Airport. It was then discovered that Maurice had been beaten, strangled, sexually assaulted, and then murdered, with her belongings still remaining at the scene. With numerous suspects and collected evidence, police never found the killer since DNA technology wasn't fully developed yet. In 2007, DNA that was extracted from the crime scene was submitted to the Pennsylvania State Laboratory, which was able to create a DNA profile of the killer. Unfortunately, the DNA profile did not match anyone in the system of known offenders, aka CODIS. But then in 2018, technology had become advanced enough that Paraben Nano Labs was able to create a snapshot phenotype facial prediction of the suspect from his DNA. 
These photos show what the, sus the suspect might look like at age 25, 40, and 60 years old. And just so you know guys, I will be posting um, the links of where I found this information and one of the links does contain those photos. Later in 2018, DNA technology and genealogy research found that an arrest had been made in December of 1992 for a murder of a teacher named Christy Merak, again, I hope I'm saying that right, in Lancaster County. To the families and investigators' dismay, the lack of budgeting for cold case um, for cold cases stifled further exploration, leaving the family with even more unanswered questions. Which, honestly, if that was someone in my family that had been murdered, and we couldn't further explore, you know, to see who killed them because of lack of money, that would honestly destroy me. Like, how horrible is that? Like, that person could have been that person who murdered her, but they will now never know because, you know, they don't have the money to operate all the, um, all the technology and whatnot to find out, you know, that, I don't know, that would just drive me bananas. And, uh, the family wondered how many of the 250,000 families of unsolved murders in the country since 1980 have been blocked from further investigation because of the lack of funding for cold cases. Obviously, the family still hasn't given up on their search for answers, but they were able to come to terms with Maurice's death and to forgive the killer in order to help heal themselves. Now, still it's now 2019 and Nothing else has been discovered since then, but uh, what do you guys think? Do you think that that um, person that was arrested in 1992 could have been her murderer? Or do you think that's unlikely and that maybe it was somebody else? Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down below. Again, I am leaving the links of the resources that I had gotten this information from, and one of them does have a tip line, so if anybody knows anything about this incident, please, you know, come forward with that and uh, let authorities know so the family can move on. But um, yeah, that is the homicide of Maurice Chivarella. And uh, hope to see you guys soon. Peace out. Okay, one more thing before I leave officially. So what I'm going to do for um, these true crime videos, when I start getting more subscribers and actually get paid for content, what I am going to do is have all that money that I make from those videos donated to either a um, charity, so I'm thinking like Network of Victim Assistance or um, the National Organization of Parents of Murdered Children, something like that. So that money is not wasted just because I feel like it's a horrible thing to make money from someone else's tragedy. So yeah, I just wanted to leave you guys with that. See you guys later.